Hello everybody and welcome back to the Celtic Unrestricted Review podcast. It's a two Ronnie's and a Monday session, JP. How's things, mate? Hope you had a good weekend. Celtic are back, mate. Pump six goals. Well, perhaps absolutely pump, mate. Glad to have you back on. Two Ronnie's, how's things, mate? Hi, cheers, mate. Nice to see you. Uh, always nice seeing your wee happy face, mate. Um, I, as you say, mate, um, the slump continues with the Celtic, sir. Um, Goal drought, as we were, we were getting branded at one point there. Um, goal shy, lot, lacking in confidence. I've heard quite a few words in the last couple of weeks here. Um, but aye, as I said, we're back with a bang on Saturday. Um, and albeit a guy we've kind of, I don't want to say run down, but a guy we've kind of, we've kind of been saying for a while now, he's not been at the races and he's not been, he's not been firing. James Forrest, um, he was sitting in 97 goals and until Saturday and then he goes out on Saturday and gets his century. So uh, it was a good day all round, mate, in, in all honesty. How, uh, how's things been with yourself, mate? I'm back, back on over, mate, but we're all right. We'll get there. Um, like you say, he's maybe James Forrest, obviously. could probably start on him, JP. I know we've had, um, since we've obviously had a few issues with this week, mate. Um, Obviously, yourself getting back to full health and uh, stuff like that. So, uh, we've had a, um, so a lot of content this week. I know if there's a few people asking where you are, mate, but you're all we're all back on now, mate. All good. Um, obviously, the Leipzig game again, Hibs, mate, good performance. I think probably James Forrest could be a good back to start, mate, to be honest with you. Um, again, for me, I, I don't think he's been good enough for the last 18 months or so. Um, I think his stats, I tell you that. I know he's in, in, in and out of the team. He got his new deal. Some of us were questioning it. I was questioning it. I'm still questioning it. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to be that fickle because he won amazing performance. It. I'm going to say that's him back, and that's that's me. I'm a governor again. I thought it's. Yeah. Um. Similar, for me, I've always said you can only comment on what you see, and for that game on Saturday, it was brilliant. He done everything that you expect him to do. Um. Well, he it, it has done in the past. He was brave, he was taking guys on, mm-hmm. he was he was running back, which for me, I, I kind of, the, the thing I used to think before this was, I don't want to say he was lazy, I just thought tracking back wasn't his strength. Yeah. Um, but on Saturday, he done that perfectly well. He was up and done the, the wing with um, Burnaby. Um, I thought they were brilliant, to be fair. Um, when he was when they were swapping wings with Ralston as well, they were really good. So I can't really criticise him at all. Um, to get hundred goals, mate, it's phenomenal. Any any club at any level, but at Celtic, it's a massive, massive. Um, it's, a, it's a massive achievement, mate. It really is. Um, I'm a, I'm no, I'm a big believer when it comes to stats sometimes, but one James Forrest for me the last eighteen months kind of he starts for maybe the season for me because from from the naked eye, I didn't think he was doing it. Um, we all know that the New Deal got go to spot the opinion um, and you've got to trust the manager on the opinion but on this one I didn't really understand it um, but if James Forrest is going to be like this from now on if that's him back to full fitness and that's him back on his A, a game and he continues to be like that then I'm not going to take back what I've said because I can only comment on what, I'm, what I've seen but yeah. I'll take back I can maybe see why the manager's kept him then. I can see that he's yeah. still got something into the team. Um, but for me, JP, he's got to play on Wednesday now. There's no point in him having that good performance and then putting him on the bench because how's he going to get consistency back? He's not going to get confidence levels again if he's no playing. I know you're no class that he's getting dropped. It's a rotation basis for Celtic now, but I think it's a, a big thing, I think, JP, that he's got to continue to play now. Um, and Wednesday, maybe... The Saturday maybe that to the bench, but I think he's got to play some sort of role now because there's no point in doing that performance and then putting him back to the sidelines because he's not going to get back to any type of form if he's going to if it's going to be like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think that's fair, mate. I think a level of consistency is going to have to come into play in terms of uh, James finding form again uh, to the player that we hope you know that we saw when he broke through and he, as an eighteen year old boy. Um, but Saturday night he was, you know, he was so aggressive in his press. He was on and off the ball. He was switched on. He was looking for the ball. He was looking to drop in off his shoulders. He was looking to get on the end of one twos. 
He was always involved. He was getting share involved with play. He was going looking for trouble. Whenever the trouble was being caused, James was James was a part of it. And he was you could see the hunger. And I mean Saturday I thought Ryan as well. I thought it was a lot of desire for him to go on the end of things as well and help out with Alston with the overlaps and overloads down the sides. Um I thought his his overall ball retention was superb. I love him. See when see when he's like that and he's at his pump mm-hmm. right and he, he knocks the ball about for fun. I love when he outside of the boot passes he mm-hmm. plays in the inside, catches defenders with that constantly. I mean the big boy Porte, he tried to step out on three passes alone and he just made them look like a bit goody. I mean it was like, what are you doing, big man? You've got to read that a bit better, you know. And there's a big shout about him moving up levels and everything else. I'll tell you what, the only levels he's moving up is probably on his PlayStation because on Saturday you get ragdolled. And and that's just that that's just to be all and end all it. Um, the only level he would move up is probably the next one in Super Mario and the Nintendo maybe. Um, because Big Portis, I'm not saying he's a bad player, man. I'm just saying that he's got a lot to do if he wants to move up levels in terms of the game. He was found wanting severely on Saturday. Um, I think it was it was him and Jack Amakis went for a ball together. The ball was in my bear. Jack Amakis actually knocks a flick on himself. The two then jumped for a ball and he bounced off the big man and he bounced into the middle of next month. Um, he was lying in a heap. And then I think when he fills Jack Amakis, he has the audacity to then scream something into Jack Amakis, mm-hmm. his face when he's lying on the floor. There's a lot of that guy's game that he's going to have to improve before he moves anywhere. Um, so I think we can put that one to bed for the, for the time being in terms of him. I heard a rumour the other day that we were linked to him as well and you know that was going to be a dress rehearsal for, for Ange, but Nah, as I say, Portis is, I think Portis would, would struggle to get a game in the select team on Sebutio right now, um, let alone the actual first team. But again, back to Forrest, mate, the form he showed on Saturday. But listen, this isn't the first time I've seen this before this season. I thought he was good the other night when he came on against Leipzig. Yeah. I thought he was very good. He was getting by the boy, uh, took the boy on a few times, good cut of crosses into the box. Um... It's just a shame, unfortunately, up till now, we've been kind of goal shy in the Champions League. Um, our boys, I don't know whether it's experience, whether it's lack of confidence. Then you can say it's lack of confidence, but then they get into that on Saturday. Mm. So, it kind of really trips itself up. Um, but no, it was just it was just really, it was really humbling, mate, to actually see um, a James Forrest performance. Because I think a lot of the Celtic fans are more frustrated with James due to the fact that they know he's got some sort of ability. You don't stay with Brian, you don't stay in about the Celtic first team fringes, mate, if you yeah. don't have some sort of ability for as long as the man has. He's been there what now for ten man ten years. I think he's I oh and he's been at Celtic since he was late or nine, isn't he? Oh, through all the youth and all that and stuff. There you go then. So you don't stay in... No, I was just meaning sorry doing about the first team. Ah, uh, well, I think it was... It was Lennon that gave... Was it Lennon that gave me his debut? Aye, uh, it was Lennon. Uh, it was against Murrow. Actually, uh, the Murrow manager. Right uh, uh, he was... He was the boy, uh, was the boy, uh, boy that was mm-hmm. marking him when he scored the goal. He, 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 he was the boy that was running Stevie Hamill. Aye. Uh, um, no, I agree with you, mate. You've got to... To be, to be at, at Celtic for... See, you get through the Celtic youth system. You've even guys like Mikey Johnson, etc. You've got to have some sort of special time, get into the first team and play because you, Celtic's a very, very hard place to go and play a football. As a Just youth player, like Mikey Johnson, and I felt he's getting labelled the money messy in the unfortunate. Supposedly, he's doing well. Apparently, he's turning um, him up for That's been fair as well, mate. That's that's no. A damn scrubby league. You've still got Benfica. No, no. Photo. It's a decent standard he's playing it, and he's obviously getting game time again. He's he's an all one JP that you hope that the loan spell will maybe help him. And, and give him a new deal as well. I force you up him out as well. So he's. I don't know how. I think it may have been a year or something, but it was. He gave him a new deal to to to, to then from another one from to go and prove himself. I think it was a new deal. I just obviously, best. I don't know if it's about a loyalty or so, but. To maybe come and prove yourself, but I do agree uh-huh. to play with Celtic. Yet again, I know we're, we're criticising Forrest for no really performing. We're criticising Johnson, criticising these guys. But when you take away like your, like your actual Celtic hat mm-hmm. and you look at 
to get to Celtic the first team level, to get through the youth levels and then get up to the first team, you must have some special talent because that's just just for me that's a given. To get yeah. to, to get into the Celtic first team, I think you've got to be you've got to have something special. Um, I know Kieran Tierney's a he's a guy who's he's like the poster boy, you know. They're the, McGregor, they're the poster boys are guys to get through Ralston now. There's are some of the guys that are coming through the system and <laughs> Part of, Ralph has done really well, but McGregor's a special talent. Taylor's a special talent. Johnson's obviously got ability. Yeah. But it's, is it the confidence? Is it the fitness? Is it his body? I mean, we don't we don't know all this. We don't. We can only we can only see what happens on the park and what we hear for social media. We can We don't know the ins and outs. But mm-hmm. in terms of agreeing, mate, I think to, I think some fans, even myself, sometimes you need to take a step back and that's a realize to get to the to get to the level of these guys are at and. The stats he's, he's done, it is really phenomenal. And uh, he's basically, I think it's so 100 goals. So, so he, he's basically averaging the 10, 10 goals a season. And yeah. it's, it's not he's, he's, he's no, he's no continually uh, played. So I think he scored in the last, I think he scored every season for Celtic. Think, if he, uh, if mm-hmm. He's come into the first team. But that, that I know is phenomenal. So I do agree, um, I'd be that he, he's obviously got a lot of ability. Um, yeah. For me, I've I've never I, I've never thought he was wow this special player. I've never thought he was he, he's no somebody that ever got me excited to get, see like the, the Majota. I know it's a different it's a different kettle of fish, right? Mm-hmm. Being excited, but before he started, I don't go I don't get rid of him on the ball. But that does mean I don't, I don't he's not a good player. He's just mm-hmm. he's different in that sense. I think maybe because he's Scottish as well. See if he was maybe Portuguese like Jota, mm-hmm. then he might be or oh, this guy's brilliant. Somewhat I came into was another podcast we spoke about. Um, if like Taylor, if, if like Taylor, I, I can't remember what game it was. I think it was a Rangers game, I think, recently. And if that was like a left back for a bizarre or something, they'd, they'd, be, they'd be talking about him. Aye. I'd say aye. that. I'd say if, he's, if Taylor's name is Spanish or aye. Brazilian, then so, they'd be talking about his performances aye. for months. So maybe it's maybe similar to that, maybe it was before us because he'd be frustrated because we know. He's got that ability when he doesn't. He doesn't do it often enough. Because for me, I thought he was done. I generally, for, for what I'm seeing from him, he was just not getting by men anymore. He's for me. It was that. It was that goal. Uh, the the performance he put in when he came on the bench against Rangers semi final, and he he was away behind Bash, and I thought mm-hmm. he's finished. He, he's finished. That's right. that's not acceptable. But you can see he's he's, he's got fitter by obviously the game is Saturday. So I don't really want to spend too much time in. He's passed because I can only count on 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 a game, mate. And right, so. again, and the game, the 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 teams as a whole, um, and Saturday, well, were really really good. Again, like he says, uh, apparently we're, we're in a crisis again. We're struggling. We're not doing very well. This and that, but I I just think that's it's not put any doubters away. But it's kind of went. Listen, Celtic have no moment anyway. We've had one or two under par performances, but we used to. They're still winning games, but for what we are used to, it's not like they've been absolutely fucking like powder puff like, in, mm-hmm. in terms of the, the, the league. St. Johnson, I didn't think was the best of performances. I did think it was flat, but when you look at the stats, for, it doesn't look like it was flat. But you take your chances, you're yeah. first off, right? It's a cricket uh, score again, mate. But when you watched, for me, when I watched the game against St. Johnson, I know the stats, the stats probably tell me I'm talking with her garbage, but for the naked eye, it was poor. It was flat. Mm-hmm. We only moving the ball, and it's all right to keep possession. But if you're no, if you're no taking any chances, the last 10, 15 minutes is going to be the way it was because that's just natural. But mm-hmm. the game is Saturday, mate. Started very quick again. Big Jackie Marcus, mate. For me, he's the main man out front. Um, if he keeps keeps playing, and keeps scoring, don't see any reason why he's he's not going to be playing. Kyogo for me is still obviously the main man in terms of all round ability. But Jackie Marcus came in. It's for me, it's his jersey to lose now. Aye, I can see where you're, where you're coming through with that man, Ryan. But I think with big hands, mate, I think it's going to be horses for courses, mate. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know my thoughts on Kyogo. Um, I'm, not, I'm not going to get into that again here. Um, but I love a big man and all because he brings that, that physicality, um, kind of brute strength to the team that Kyogo does, not But overall... Kyogo just brings a total speed, tempo, mm. freshness. Um, I mean, that one, he, he hits it first time. He's unlucky. He hits the post. He's unlucky. 
He's trying to cut it inside. Marshall's lost. Absolutely lost. He's never getting that in a month of Sundays. Um, he's standing watching it. And then the one and all the wee man's on the stretch. He's on the, he, he spins and it's like a Van Damme kick. He nearly booted yeah. my head and he hit for my head as well. Um, it was like a, a kind of spinning cratty kick. Um, he, tried to, he tried to kill it. But obviously then my head are under and scores, which... Mm. I, again, mate, he, he's come under a bit of criticism with sections of your support as well. Um, in terms of, oh, he's not involved and he's been after boy and he's done this and he's done that. You've got to look at the duties he's been asked to carry out as well. He's been asked to carry out a different type of duty. Mm -hmm. He's not been played as a proper out and out forward the way he was last season when he was getting in among the goals. This season he's been played out wide. He's been asked to do a lot of chasing. He's come on in games where guys like fullbacks like Carvajal and... Um, Boys like Simikin and are getting forward for the other teams. I think it was the other, was the other big boy's name, I know. Um, was it Zubkov, boy for mm -hmm. Shakhtar? Yeah. He's coming on against these guys who are getting forward and causing damage down their side. So he's coming on to pin them because see when these guys get forward and you're playing against a guy with pace like that and you know they're getting shut down, it stops you coming forward. You eliminate that threat away from the other team. I know these guys look like Carver Hall and that, they'll, they'll just find a way, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll play in a bookie, but I thought he'd done really well against Carver Hall when he came on. Um, and then, as I say, so he's, he's been asked to do a, a, a different duty. Mm -hmm. um, I can see how people are saying, you know, he needs to work on his touch and he needs to work on big hands. said he said, he's not a funny start to call the boy. Um, he's still young as well. It was good to see him get a go, because that'll do a bit for his confidence as well. I think after his couple of chances against Leipzig on Tuesday as well, you know, his seed might have been done. Um, but again, mate, he's a different nationality as well for, for like a young Scottish boy or a, a young British boy. They've got they've got made up about them, mm -hmm. you know, and work ethic and everything else. They just go away and they'll train harder, they'll do it they need to do and they'll, they'll get there. I actually think Lee Johnson spoke very highly of the Japanese boys when he died, I. When he's post match, and he's egging his players to go and speak to them and try and get jerseys off them and then have a chat with them about what do you do, what's your training methods, mm -hmm. what do you do in the morning, how do you how do you recover, what do you do, blah blah. As if the boys are going to tell them, do you know what I mean? As if they're going to say, oh, this is what I do, and this is what I should be doing, and blah blah blah. But I can understand where he's coming from because he's looking at his Hibs team saying, right, they're fucking levels above us, like levels above us. And if that's a like a, a team who's sitting third in the league, sitting saying that about Celtic, it just shows you the difference in golf, mate, in, in terms of, you know, where we are to there. And then we look at the Champions League and we go, oh, what a jump that is, you know. Like, a, lot of, a lot of people need to take a wee sit back and have a think about it as well, because it was only a year and a half ago, Matt O'Reilly sitting playing with MK Dons, mate. Mm -hmm. he's, now in the champ he's now playing in the Champions League. That's a massive jump. Massive, massive jump in terms of quality players he's playing against. The training he's probably had today to get his cell ready to play in the matches. Um, so it's no, it's not been an easy, an easy journey, and it's quite a lot of their first season playing in the Champions League as well. Yep. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to hazard a guess and say quite a bit. Of it's maybe done to an experience. You know, you're you're clutching at shots that you would maybe get away with scoring. In the league, mm -hmm. whereas in Europe, mate, you need to be firm, mate. you need to be clinical, and we have the manage to do it, which is now why we're at the Champions League. We've still got a small chance of getting to the Europa League, and just hanging on to that. But I'm telling you, now we've no chance because I don't, I don't mean, think I, I, we might I, beat Shakhtar. I, I, Listen, I hope we do. I hope we, I hope we put a bit of pride back in us mm -hmm. and we, we get that home result. Uh, takes us off that one point that we're sitting on and now makes it look a bit better um, but we ain't going to Madrid to beat Madrid in the Bernabeu mate it's just not happening unless Madrid put it under 13s we might, we might even only keep the score down to 2 because um, they're under 14s on their bad side I know I heard um, but no, as I say it's, it's one of the it's one of the things mate it's, it's a season that unfortunately in my opinion is just going to bypass his airline in the Champions League it's been a big learning curve. I hope they, they can take it away and learn. 
And if we manage to win the league this season, my understanding is we can straight back in again the following season. So I hope this is a big learning curve in terms of where we need to be as a team, the way we need to portray ourselves when we're there, and what, what's needed to be done in the matches. Because we've had great moments in every one of our matches so far, and we've spurned the majority of the chances. So it's that just eats away at me, Ryan. I don't know about you, mate, but that's that's eating away at me because I, I, we think these guys are really, you know, you're mentioning Jota, Haskabanovic mm-hmm. looks a player and all. You thought about Big Jack Amakis, Kyogo. We, we mm-hmm. think these guys are quality, but if they're in there and they've, they've, I don't want to say they've let ourselves down, but they've, they've no showed their, in my mm-hmm. opinion, mate, they're true, true colours. Well, it's like I say to you um, before the game, and also me and John spoke about it as well before the, the away game against Leipzig. We have we we think Kyogo and Jack and Marcus and Jota they are good players, no doubt about it. But and um, you see the guys like Werner and Kunku, Pilsen, Felsberg, that's why they're at that level because they're doing it in the big stages. They're scoring yeah. goals in the big stages. We've almost scored was it one goal? Two, but that one the first aye. one was an OG. Aye, so technically you've almost scored one goal if you want to play. So in terms of that, I'm agreeing with you. You can't criticise too much now because I'd rather they were creating the chances and they were getting there because eventually, oh, they they? eventually it will click. But in the same degree, it, it does frustrate the living shit out of you because it, some of the chances are no hard chances. That's the thing. Some of the chances are like, I don't want to say tap ins, but you're like, that one with Abada and Jota and McMahon. You're like, come on. It's, it's no. Aye. It's, it's a bit, it's, I don't know. I'm not saying sure it's a lack of belief. I, I know Robert uh, spoke about that as well on, on the chat, but for me, it's no... I want to say it's lack of belief in terms of the, the, the ability. I think it's just composure. Just take your time. Just relax. Yeah. You're good enough to do it. You just need to take stock and just don't don't think it is as high-pressure game, just as a normal game. I don't know if that's what, to, like you say, some of them have not really played in this competition before. I think maybe I think it's just Joe Hart, McGregor and Trent. Forrest. Forrest. Um, Ralph's has obviously played as well on it right off, but uh, he's not really been a, a massive he's part. Not been a, not a massive are, part on it. Aye, 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 aye. Pros in terms of oh, but I, uh, I do, uh, like I've said to you, mate, I've said it before. That's is why they guys at that level. Um, that's is why they are getting fifty million pound moves and hundred grand a week, whatever it says. I know Leeds make no pay hundred grand a week, but that's mm-hmm. why they at that level. Um, I, I, I think it's. You just feel a bit deflated to the European side because again it's not finished yet and still again I'm with you, mate. I'm I'm a I'm a realist. You'd hope to get something done, but can I really see it personally? I don't want to be too negative, probably no. I watched them against Barcelona. Barcelona kinda of hounded them yesterday and my dad just defended him and won won the game three one. Right. So if Barcelona can hound them and they can go and beat them three one, be we hound them. It's, it's not going to touch them. Do you know what I mean? It's no. They're just going to. Mm-hmm. Their class is eventually going to show unless they have an absolute off day, which very rarely the day. Then and we've got to have the game of our fucking lives, mm-hmm. like a Barcelona at Celtic Park. Even then, we've only we, only, we just defended well. We, we didn't really play amazing well against Barcelona. We just one of the games. We just it was a, it was a proper European display. And that's, that's the thing, Ryan. I was talking to a guy I knew as well, and you just said it the other day. It seems like every one of the games we need to play the game of our life. Aye. That's Aye. what to Aye. me that's the way it seems. We need to be Aye. bang on it all the time. It's Whereas the bigger similar. teams like the, the, the ones that are more experienced, they can get away with playing poor here and mm. poor there. What's well, still manage to is, claw a two one result or a it's similar to us in the league, isn't it? We can have an half day and maybe still win and not really play well. well we uh, but these like listen, Marin, if they if they didn't turn up to the day game they're not, never going to win the game. St. Johnson, they're not going to win the game. Sometimes even Rangers are not no turn up to the game and they're struggling. So, but we for recently the last few games we've not been utter utter garbage, but we've got away with it. I know apart from the Marin game, that was a game we didn't turn up. But even then, mm. we missed a lot of chances. So it's not like we're not creating. It's not like we're having two shots and goal and that's it. But, but under Neil Lennon, we'd think no shots and target against Rangers. It's not like that's happening. That's not happening. It's just. It's a right, right but there you go. Top but cutting. We've won, we've won six one on Saturday, but it was six and on ten again. Mm-hmm. It could be more than six. But again, I don't want to be too negative, JP, but I thought I thought the goal was poor. 
to lose at the time. I was thinking, fuck me, keep a clean sheet. At the time, I thought the goal was put to lose at the time, but again... They, they sort of dragged his out of position as Aye. well. See, when you look at it back, and Jens comes high, Aye. Carter Vickers needs to go across to cover Boyle. Mm. He's out of position, in my opinion. Aye. He plays I, right side of centre again, back. I don't just because of where I sit. At the time, I was thinking, that's poor. I was like, Aye. why are we conceding a goal? Like, for no pressure. Joe Hart's but, beat it in your post Aye. as well, so... You can but, sort of... Uh, but in terms of the full performance, mate, I, I, like you say, individually, I thought Burnaby was outstanding. Um, again, I've heard he listens to the podcast, and I'm no Greg Taylor's biggest fan, but uh, I've really praised him the last few months because he has done really well. But I, I did say, uh, obviously, we spoke to Seba as well, and Seba did say, give him time, you need to let him settle in, and yep. then he will, he will, even he probably said that he probably will be the left back. And I do believe You've got two good left backs now. Um, I it's, it's just the energy up and down, up and down. The delivery for yeah. the the Jack and Marcus bats fast. What a ball that is! That's phenomenal. Um, it's for his goal against St Johnston as well. Brilliant. So, I I think he's maybe again. You, you know what? It'd be too too over excited. He's only it's only two or three games now. He's done well. He's got it consistently, but. Early days on Burnaby, J.P. Haskabanovich. Um, again, he looks a player. This is what I said to you as well. He's a winger. You can see he's a winger. He's getting dragged at position playing there. He can maybe do the job in midfield, but you can see he's made effective out wide. Similar yeah. when you play Kyogo out wide, he's not effective. He just, uh, he's just a waste of jersey playing Glogo left because he's, he's not going to, he's not going to be the same effective player. But yeah. in terms of Haskabanovich and guys at Burnaby, mate, it's very. You know why you're too ahead of yourself, but for the future, mate, in terms of the next few months and obviously not the next year, um, they guys are just going to get even better. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Um, Burnaby's an absolute flying machine. His delivery is better than delivering just eat put together. He's um, it's unbelievable. It's a pinpoint accuracy. And it, I'll tell you what, what a big target Jack Amakis has to have. And he's no failed to date any time he's tried so far. Um Hope he doesn't get disappointed and doesn't fucking mess the week, see us. Um, but um, no, he's an absolute flying machine. He's again, he's really aggressive. I thought Boyle struggled against him mm. at the weekend. There was a lot of talking into the game on Saturday about Boyle being a flying machine and this and that. And it, be be, uh, you'd better be Frankie Boyle. Susan Boyle. Susan Boyle. Aye. Danny Boyle. Um, he was missing, wasn't he? I mean, he was. There's posters all out of Belgrove Hotel, and they're still looking for him. <laughs> um, he was reported missing. Apart from setting up the Habs goal, I mean, mm. I don't, I just don't know what else Boyle did the whole day. Um, and everybody keeps saying he's a top player, and he's asking, he's up. I really wish people was the case. Even they come up against Celtic, like, these guys don't do nothing. They no, don't. Like, like I say to you and all, they were talking about. Both players do against big teams. They were talking about going to Celtic. I'm like, listen, this is probably the same fans that wanted Jack Ross to be a manager. Do you know what I mean? That's hard to remember. That. I'm you know like, I'm like, listen, you've got to, just because you do well against you, does mean they can step up. Like, with John Shooter, I know he's injured for Rangers, right? But he his first eight game or two for Rangers looked well at his death at Rangers. That first game against Limousin, he was getting slaughtered. It's a big difference going for playing against St Mirren and with the Hearts than you oh, get up to. Because absolutely. Celtic obviously had to be. Guys like Stephen Presley, his first few games, he was he was all right, but even guys like Derek Rodden came to Celtic, wonderful player for Hibs, couldn't, couldn't get a game for Celtic. For I don't even that in all right. Stratton said he was the best finisher at the club. Why are you playing him then? I believe, again, JP, we could probably talk about all this, all this, all this stuff all day. But That's for another podcast, mate. I do, I believe, in terms of Rodden, mate, just in terms of that topic, I do think there's something must have been behind the scenes because you can't come out and say... You're the best fans at the club and then sat on the bench. That's for me, that's just madness. That's just mad. It's it's generally like saying he's a Gucci, the best midfielder, but yet you don't play him. Aye. Um, listen, I'll give him the bench as well. So, will he maybe get a sniff on Wednesday? Again, this is Wednesday was probably the game now coming up that Ann should have made the seven or eight changes to try and uh, again, he might, he, he might still do it, but this is the game where maybe you try and go a 4 4 2 or a Four, three, whatever experiment. Aye. That again, you still want to win. You don't want to lose a game, but this is maybe you play guys who haven't really played. Maybe either Gucci or McCarthy. But McCarthy might 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 be deserving a start. He's won. He's won again. Have done okay as well. So um, maybe keep 
I'm not saying keep him happy, but play him 90 minutes, keep him fresh. Mm-hmm. Or Aylan or Tati, I've been having to do about a work recently because McGregor's not there, so do you leave one of them out, keep him fresh? You don't want to do too many changes, but maybe this was the game. Looking back now, maybe Ange could have thought about today the changes that he, sh- he should have maybe done against it, man. Hi, quite possibly, mate. Hi. Um... Although I think you want to still go strong now, considering oh, I, yeah. you know it's a cup we won last season. I think Ange yeah. will, will want to keep a hold of it. So I, I do think you will go strong. If you win this, it gets you ball on for the. Well, that's what I'm saying. You, you, you then you then set up confidence. You set up momentum. You set up mm. a lot of stuff. Get into the. And is this cup? Does this cup finish before the World Cup starts this time? Do you know, I'm not too sure, mate. I don't want to comment on it to be sure. I'm not too sure because that is roughly the December time that it ends, isn't it? Roughly, it's it? normally December, aye, aye, but aye. because because of the World Cup, are they bringing up? I'm just wondering, are they bringing up well, forward? Well, it's a, 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 a quarters, isn't it? That's right, isn't it? I'm not sure, right? I don't. Hi, I think the next aye. one after this is going to be Hamden. Aye, uh, well, maybe then, mate. I might be a quick turnaround then. I might be. <laughs> I'll need to do about a. I'll need. I'll need to get after this and all because next Tuesday, next Tuesday we're that, that, right back into that and all. Aye, but I, again, mate, I do agree. <laughs> um, in terms of <coughs> Berlin, go back to back on to Berlin, mate. Um, I brought me mate. I, again, you know, what to be too hyped him up and say, Oh, he's this and that. And but you've got some fans who maybe seen for five minutes because he makes one mistake, and that's some mm-hmm. I shake the eyes. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes we as fans need to take a step back sometimes and look at the game and look at the stats and look at this and look at that because just because for five minutes a guy has a bad five minutes doesn't mean he's a bad player. Uh-huh. Or he loses one man. Uh, top defenders can lose goals and lose. So, um, but I, I think in, in terms of that, mate, um, I think he's very good. Um, I think, I think Taylor knows now he's got a bit of competition. I don't think obviously last year he, he was basically the left back with his. Even if Taylor wasn't very good last year, mm-hmm. he'd obviously Montgomery there and guys like that, and they weren't really going to play scales. Again, he's Aberdeen, so um, two of them have made again options. You've got two left backs now that can play. I still think Ralston's all right. Um, I don't think Ralston's phenomenal. I don't. He's he's done well, and he's a he's a steady Eddie uh, setting command to that uh, Janovic. Again, mm-hmm. I thought Janovic um, against Leipzig wasn't brilliant for the goals, but um, that for me doesn't mean he's a bad player. Because, no, no, no. But um, he's a bad night. But, the he's, a, he's a bad night, JP. But when you go on social media, and you think he's he's one of the worst right backs I've had in fucking years. I know. I slaughtered him on my, my post. I said he was rotten, but that's all I said. I just said he was rotten. My head was rotten because my head was rotten. He deserved to get on the bench. And I'm, I'm happy to go to goal, like you said as well. That'll help him. Because um, it was a, 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 at the time I thought, oh, he, he's just nearly missed that. But then when I look back, it was a brilliant, brilliant finish. So, I, in terms of that, that mate, is a lot of positive ways, uh, a lot of positive going forward that way, mate. No, it is because then obviously you, the guys who were squad players, because Burnaby wasn't getting a strength up until recently. Mm-hmm. Um, he brought him on again, obviously, in the Tuesday game against uh, Leipzig and brought him on at left, left wing. Um, so the Mary and Mary plays Burnaby. I think the Mary and Mary Angie's even starting to see about, mm-hmm. you know, how he injects an energy into the team as well like going forward. He's certainly a lot faster than Greg Taylor. Distribution-wise, is still a bit you know, I still say Taylor's. I mean, Taylor's been playing like a fucking playmaker, right? He's been playing like that sort of number ten, finding holes and passes and defence splitting passes. And, and in my opinion, Taylor's done nothing wrong at all. He's done nothing to warrant like I'm all of a sudden being wrapped out of the team. Would I be surprised? Probably no, no, because you're a very Burnaby. You also can play now as well. What we're seeing. Um, again, it's all to do with consistency. There's no point getting a guy a couple of games and then he's out for six weeks and you don't see him. But then again, you can't keep, you can't play two left backs. You can't play two right backs. You can't, do you know what I mean? So it's a kind of, it's a kind of, he's six and man half a dozen, isn't it? With big hands in his top processor. I do think we've got two very, very good options now for the left side. Um, I wouldn't be bothered. Whatever man starts, whatever man does not. I think a lot of fans will be surprised overall if it like come the, the Champions League games that it isn't Taylor. Um just by the way he's played. 
because we were all worried that you know the beginning, and we all thought that Bernabe was going to be the number one. And we were off thinking that you know if Taylor was coming in and he was going to have to play second fiddle to Bernabe, mm-hmm. and we thought Taylor wasn't up to taking his game up a level. He's took it up to one level. Do you know what I mean? He's he's went to a new height with the whole thing, and uh, and that maybe just for the fact that we've seen Bernabe that's took that to happen mm-hmm. for Taylor to go. I don't know, you're not getting my jersey. So, and that's probably superb. Um, same with Alston. Anytime he comes in, he doesn't look out of place. He looks as if he's very comfortable. He's he's always very fit and available, Ryan, as well. Not to start with Alston. He's always yeah. very fit and available. and um, He's always ready to go and he's always eager to please when he is there. So, long may it continue, mate. As I say, we've, we've, we've got the makings of a really good squad now. Um, and it, it looks like Ange is going to have to play the squad as well to overcome the amount of games that we've got in our schedule. I think the big man's mentioned that a few times as well. So I wouldn't like to hear a lot of moaning now for your fans mm-hmm. saying, oh, why is he changing the team a bit? Because he's, he's, if you're asking these pressers, he explains to you why he's changing the teams. Because he doesn't want to keep depending on the same mm-hmm. 12, 13 guys that he had to debut at the beginning because the squad wasn't big enough. And before you know it, Turnbull's out with a hamstring injury and Kyogo's out with a hamstring injury. So there's two of your main men mm. out straight away. But we had to cope through that, man. We had games that, that the league yep. just didn't stop just because they were injured. We had to cope. We had to get through it. And last season was just a total miracle where that guy worked in terms of how he gets through quite a lot of that season. we a very, very narrow Squad. It's not, when was the last time JP? Sorry, cut you in, but it was just because oh, it, it, it was finished anyway. No, I swam, I swam my head there by the way you're talking about that. Uh, when was the last time we'd, we had a proper, I mean, fully fit squad for three, four, five weeks? No injuries with a squad just there. When was the last time we had, like, I know McGregor's out now and Iriguchi was out. When was the last time we had, just say, the 18, 19, 20 players who play in and out consistently? When Three seasons. No, I. But I mean, during that show, a season. All right. Maybe at the beginning, remember we had aye. a week. Look, like, before the Champions League, we had what we had aye. a full week to recover. Remember. So you, we've technically we've never had, like you said, apart from pre-season. No, for a great period of time. No. no. Um, and obviously the other side of the city, they're feeling the effects of that now, injuries because they're struggling with injuries, wise and like we were last year. But yeah, but when we done it, we were we were hopeless and no good enough and this and that, but. Again, mate, that's... Aye, everybody mate. likes to sit and go and sushi, Ryan, and throw stains at everybody aye. else, mate, to see where the world, mate. But I do agree with you, mate. I think... Um, it's actually back in the, the point you said about, obviously, the Hibs manager. I, again, I, I think he took a bit of jip for some people for what he says, but I liked what he says. He was all I liked... He was basically telling these players, this is how, what you need to find out how you get to that level. But basically, what he said, he says... How do you get a move for Hibs? How do you get to play with Celtic? Like, go and ask the guys what they're doing better than you. Is it, is it, is it discipline? Is it their food? Is it their fitness? Find out what they're doing better because obviously he's passed off. Giant P's team get beat, but I, I think what I think he was trying to deflect away for the the team now. Basically saying that this team are very very good. Mm-hmm. I think he was praising Celtic, but no one is here. So then he looked that he was saying, "Oh, Celtic were brilliant." Oh, he done it diplomatically, that. didn't he? Aye. It was nearly David Martindale saying Rangers are brilliant. You know oh. what I mean? It was commuting basically Calling saying... Calling my players nicknames and stuff aye, like that. It was basically commuting basically saying they, 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 they are aimed at your research going to find out what they guys do because whatever it is it's getting them to that level and it's... I, I think it's quite refreshing, JP, that managers can commute and do that and I don't I don't know why they're getting started for just telling the truth. They're wanting... They're, they're doing it to... They're, they're wanting to spruce... They're doing it for me. They're doing it to spruce up their players to say, "Listen, if you can do a bit better, find out how you can get to that level and how." Mm-hmm. Like again, it may be a, I don't know if it's maybe a target portis. Like maybe you need to do better if you want to get to that level. This is what this is. You watch the guys. This is what you need to do. I think he's just talking about as I, t- I think he's just talking Aye. about. I think what he was talking about is just a collective. He's team. I, I think good. he was more or less meaning where they want to be mm-hmm. as a club. Um, if they're going to improve as a club, then they need to aspire to other levels. Mm-hmm. I think that's what he was more or less pointing out. I don't think he was sending a message out in to, to end the end individually. 
I might have been, but I don't like think I, I, I uh, take it that he was just talking as a collective, as a team. Mm. Um, and like you say, Zai, he's probably cheesed off at the fact that his team get walloped, but they get walloped with his tactics. I mean, he made four changes at half time. Oh, I was bonkers. So he set the team up to play the boy McCurdy and you know the other boys that he and when he realised these boys are too lightweight, they're too they're getting overrun, they're getting mm. done at every turn. They're, you know, Celtic are playing run them. He waited till it was too late to change it. I actually thought he'd have put on the boy the boy Rocky for the start to rough up Jack and Marcus because oh, yes, he is a. No, I, I, he's one of the best of players, but in terms of physique, he's better than Harlan. In terms of that side of the game. Aye, well. Aye, Maybe not ability-wise, but Hanlon, a bit do you know what I mean? But the, the, the boy Rocky would struggle to get a game of five or six with most teams, mate. He's better. He's, I, see, he's, I see the guy next to me like that with uh, Bobby Boucher, and I mean Rocky aye, Boucher. <laughs> aye, Rocky. Rocky Barsini. Aye. Bobby Boucher for the water boy. Ma- Martin was... Oh, who was that? Who was that guy? Who was in that? Um, Michael Jackson. Oh, ball selector. Who was his name? Martin Boucher. Martin Boucher, <laughs> aye. Ah, but no, but that big boy's hopeless, man. Hopeless. What about Lee Johnson and his Dale Boy and Rodney impression? I know. What was that? Oh, but, uh, I'm last time. Come on, Lee, man. He was looking at big hands when he said that, no. Which, which, what's that all about? I, I, I think he's been taking fashion steps off people that he's just been taking so. fashion steps off. I think so. I think he won that in a golf, oh. golf bet or something like that. <laughs> I think it was one of these years because you won at the carnival and you saw a couple of darts in it. <laughs> he's just left oh. the teddy in the house and took the jacket off the teddy. It's that, it's that still game on it as the McGill's been in it with a big jacket. Aye, the McGill's been in with a big sword. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Aye, funny, but no, it's... It, you're dressed for a football match, mate, and you turn up with your dress for a rodeo. You know what I mean? <laughs> ah, I was, I must admit, I was kind of taking guy serious, didn't you? Know? No, but in terms of his comments, mate, I did think he was. I liked it, I liked it. I think managers should be able to say what they feel, obviously, to a certain degree, but um, again, it just shows you as well. I've heard a few managers now talking about the way Celtic play, and, um, and they're very, they're very. Complimented about the way Celtic play. Um, again, I, I did. I did. Obviously, I watched the game yesterday. I put it on Twitter saying, if that's the level they put and that's the level we're at, I still believe we are. In terms of, I know it's only two points ahead, um, but in terms of all round quality, I, I, I'm just. I believe the only threat to us, IP Celtic, in my opinion, mm-hmm. I, it, it's up to us uh, to, to. Obviously, teams can have good games against you or draw again against you but Rangers the new no doing very well in, in terms of feels under a lot of pressure he's we packed on his folks maybe getting packed to back to Holland because he's no doing very well on his folks he's getting uh, back on a lot of bag of jindies <laughs> in there um, so I do feel that the terms of Paw Patrol BMX about four <laughs> times the last couple of days I heard by the way in terms it's not of like, it's in a wee tiny basket and apparently you know, the, the box is that paranoid that's swelling up and it's too big to fit in the wee slot now you need to get a you need to get a wee pressure you need to get like my players out again and just dig into it again <laughs> um, but I think in terms of the, the way we are playing they're looking at him and all by the way do you know he never gave him jam last week <laughs> terrible <laughs> man they're man we're ready for his toast tell me they're um, jam but in terms of the we are fire play mate as I believe we are they need they, they team in terms of one half games they can maybe do, do things against you but in terms of the way we are playing over a long period of the season no other team will play like that no, maybe maybe just, maybe I, close. That, that, that's still saying we're going to win the league and if I'm just talking about in terms of style of play nobody so that's why I'm saying if we transform that to mm-hmm. every game for me the only threat to us is, is us as, as, again, I'm not saying we're going to win the league with 10 points or we're going to win the league at all I'm just saying the only threat for us to not win the league in my, in my opinion as 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 if we if we totally under underperform, then it's not doing other teams beating us because they're better than us. I think it's just because we have just not turned up and mm-hmm. not been good enough. I know teams can do tactics against you and they can park the bus or they can do wee bits of play and counter attacks against you, but in terms of over a long period of a season, most of these teams can't compete with you. They can compete with you like I said in Twitter. Play three defensive mids against you. They can compete. 
they can paint on maybe a one basis. But and maybe maybe take the Rangers equation because they're still challenging, right? They're still your, your, your rivals in a sense in terms of challenging. But most other teams like Hibs, I thought Hibs are going to come and actually try and play a bit of football and we should blow them in the water. And Hearts obviously got a bit harder game in the weekend. But I thought they did play a bit of football, Ryan, and then what that was it. We took aye, the ball off them. Aye, that's what I'm saying. So again, there'll be a, there'll be a big offset for the game on Wednesday. There'll be a big who have at the game on uh, Saturday. Hearts are going. Hearts are best. By the way, VR. Not, oh, VR. Aye, Ooh. that's an, that's an our team. By the way, that Robbie Nielsen is no under threat. But he's not doing very well now. Results haven't been good for Hearts now. Um, oh, I think the best thing for Robbie Nielsen would be um, is to get in about Craig Levine's tactic book and uh, find out how you how you don't play with a striker and you play a four is that a four six zero. But see, so that see you're not conceding too heavily in Europe. See in terms of the game on Saturday, obviously it's a, it's a bit ahead, but on Robbie Nielsen, um, we're going to this game on a bit of form. They're no. He'll need to get a result against us because they are really. Who have they got in the cup now? Are they still in the cup? I'm not sure, mate. I'm not sure. Because I've got to see it all come down to who. I mean, that was a do. That was a bit of a. I heard it was a do. And they took used to be. I know they get beat 2 0, but I heard it was 2 going on about 3 or 4. Well, even the game against Fontina, mate, they get battered. Ah, they get scalped, mate. They missed two or three good chances. They missed a chance in the first or 15 seconds or so. But like you say, it was a bad week in terms of. European wise for the Scottish Cup result wise. Um mere, mere, mere so obviously Rangers because again again I don't I don't want to talk about what happened. Oh exactly what happened. No, but what happened? You what think, happened? Do you really think they they could see the seven goals at home in Europe? The media just absolutely skywashed it. But yeah, if that was us, we could beat two nothing and yet we're embarrassing. I turned that off when Mugfield came on singing Saturday night. <laughs> That's enough for me, mate. I was like, oh, no. It's just, again, go go. in go. terms of the, the goal celebration, like he says with the European side, mate, I think eventually we'll, we'll learn, we'll need to learn again for next year. Obviously, it's no finish yet. Like you say, we could still get a miracle and qualify, but I can't see it. But in terms of the league, mate, I generally do believe, again, I'm not saying we're going to win the league or anything like that. I'm just saying that I do find the only threat to us, no doing what I think we should be doing. As I don't think it's because teams are better than you. Going to Europe, it's different. Teams are far better than you. And, but lives I go go to Celtic and go. Do you know what? The only t- the only place the only time we'll lose a game of days if if we don't really turn up because we're better than mm-hmm. them. That type of thing. So that's what I feel in the league. If we turn up to a day game, just about majority of the season, every season I feel not just this season in terms of Celtic. I just think the only threat is Celtic. As Celtic again, that's maybe maybe too cocky. I don't know, JP. I'm just going by to what I feel for for what I see from the players and what I see the opposition. Habs have signed a lot of players. Hearts have signed obviously Shankland. The Snodgrass has come in now, who, who I think is a fantastic signing once he starts playing for them. Um, Motherwell have got a bit their players. Aberdeen have spent a bit of dough, and these teams are still not getting close to you. So that I know St. Mary beat you know what? That's the first defeat in a year. People keep going about this defeat, JP. One defeat in a base of a year. What so so these teams are not competing because we've been beaten once in a year. He's a bright man, eh? Ah, it's mental, it's crazy. Mindset on it is just no normal. It's crazy, it's highly medicated stuff, man. It's uh, it's no it's it's absolutely mind boggling. Uh, the you know the thought process that's been given behind that. You know, we get beat with St Mund and then it is all of a sudden Celtic are gonna collapse and no, Celtic have been poor and Celtic seasons imploding. Hearing all the nonsense chat that we're hearing, the guy that eats calls beans. Yeah. I mean, come on, he said it live on the tranny. Aye, but any event, it's called beans in after none. But any event, I predicted two one. <laughs> I know he tried it. Yeah, I know. Then he's like, I predicted two one. Aye, you know. Uh, it's unbelievable. Mad, I mean, that guy's been in football a long, long time. You know. He's been in the game a long time and he spouts some of the nonsense. I don't even think he believes some of the nonsense he spouts. He uses all the big words and different types of jargon and trying to belittle people when they go in and challenge him on that phone in. All in all, he's just a, a screwless. He is, he's just a nutcase. And he's probably one of the guys you would say is worth a watch in terms of 
off the shite, he talks, isn't he? True, and the other half's hard to believe. <laughs> so it's kind of, you know, it's, it's one of the ones. Um, but no, it's, it's mental. Like you, you lose one game. You're talking, you're talking about, you know, you know what I say. You're going to win the league. You know what I say. You're just talking the experience, right? You're talking the experience, knowing the manager we've got now, knowing the way the players work, knowing the way, you know, knowing, knowing the way the manager works. Um, you're only talking through experience. He's not going to let him slip away and take the eye off the ball. A lot of people are hoping he does, by the way. Mm-hmm. That ain't happening. See, yeah. if we do get knocked out of Europe, right, and if we don't make the Europa League and all these possibilities are all still limiting, okay, fair enough, but I'm trying to be real. We get knocked out of Europe or again. We will put, I've got total faith that we will put our fit to the flare and we will go and wrap that league up. We will, that's what that'll be the that'll be the next sort of mission statement for the for the manager. Um, it'll be time go and because you've got McGregor coming back after mm. the World Cup. It just seems long line because the World Cup still. Uh, it's, only a few, it's only a few weeks. It's really, actually only a few weeks. He's under uh, for um, It just seems ages because the World Cup still to happen, and it's going to be away into December before we're back at back in domestic football. But. McGregor's back, probably going to have Starfield back, you know, if no, these round of games that we've got coming here. I'd be surprised if we don't see him before we break away for the World Cup, to be honest. Um, and then you're looking at a wee break, and then they go for what were our training camp there to Portugal, they're gone. Um, I would imagine come January there'll be signings. Um, and is very proactive. He likes to get things done his own way. He likes to get mm. things done early. We seen it last season, mate. Went to hug my morning and we'd announced the three signings of the, you know, Maeda, Ida Gucci and Tatati. Um, we were all buzzing straight away. We were all yes, here we go. Mm-hmm. And after that, it wasn't long after that it was Matt O'Reilly and it was just again the boys just came in and hit the ground running. Apart from Ida Gucci, he's a bit of the man. It's not really. Had a chance, really. First game, he got injured, and he's been kind of happy a couple of setbacks since then. It's kind of hard to judge a guy whether he's got a player or not because he's not really had a chance. Um, same with Abogard. He's the mm. same. He's come in and he's come in at a time where he's been behind the team, so he's come in and he's having to play catch up. And Jack Marcus was there last season, right? That's mm. what happened to him. Yep. You know, you, you never seen a former Jack Marcus to. A wee bit down the line in the season last season. Talking talk about and form as well. Finished, he's still what funny. He's top scorer in the league, mate. What about um, Aaron Moyes' performance as well? Saturday, oh, Aaron Moyes. I mean, in my opinion, Ryan, Aaron Moyes, people say, you know, he's been crap, he's been this, he's been that. Aaron Moyes has been really, really steady if he's coming as well. I think, I think, I think because he, he's, he's not as quick as some of the boys that he looks no good enough. But you see, in terms of his distribution, his quality, man. Oh, he's, see, 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 they be dinks out of the quality. See, they be dinks out wide, the hits, man. Bro, it's it's caliber. Football man. brains quality, man. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. There was one he played on the inside of the defender. Haska Banovic <laughs> really got on the end of the weekend. Mm. He just had to that wee bit light. The defender slid in and hurried out after Haska Banovic for a goal kick. I think it was a boy. Oh, what's his name? He got booked against Hearts in the cup semi-final last season. Is it the boy Scott? Perhaps. Aye. Big midfielder. I think it was him. I heard it off as Kabanovic. Our fans are shooting for a corner. It was the first half. Mm-hmm. And then it was after that, as Kabanovic got took half at half time because yeah. he's got some sort of an ankle knock he's had for a couple of weeks now. And they'll just want to monitor him and... Again, he's not played a lot of football mm-hmm. either. He's not played like 90 minutes consecutively. So, but that's 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 where we are the new as a team nine. It's the new guys are still trying to bed in and get used to the, the boys that were there all last season. Mm-hmm. So it's it's kind of it's all kind of a lot for the girl, mate. And as I say, you add to that again in January. Is only going to be good. I'd imagine it's going to be quality because Ange isn't going to add a project I mean, we're not going to see him for six, seven months. Ange will want to add somebody who's yeah. going to come in and make a difference to the first team. There's already chat about Welsh going to loan now in January as well, but maybe 
Ange looking at that option uh, to, to maybe put a hammer out and loan, maybe bring in another centre back to help boost the numbers in there. Um, I think we need another maybe two or three. Personally, I'm not mm-hmm. going to say positions in there because obviously I'll tell you when we're no, when we're no recording. Um, I personally think we need another two or three to really help us to kick on for the second half of the season. That will just take us that wee bit further away from everybody. Um, just another wee injection of quality. Mm-hmm. Um, that will that will just kick us on. I think we need another striker. Personally, I think that's one mm-hmm. position we need. I do think we need another out and out centre forward. Well, I think you all go and Jack and Marcus need a horn. Because whenever well, they, they do take, um, if they take a dip in form, there's not really anybody else you could look to. to go well, really, I'll go to Jack and Because my age is not a forward to me. I, do, I, I, do, I, again, I don't know. Again, this is no quite me saying he's straight or anything, or, uh, or anything like that. But I don't, uh-huh. know, if, I don't know if he's if he's a winger, is he a striker, or do you just let him just let just let him free roll and just do do the work for it? Obviously, he's Andrew obviously got him assigned to doing things on the park. But for just for what I look at him, he's finishing ability is no the best for a striker. But then the, in terms of what he does out wide, it's no he it doesn't really take on a lot of guys. Mm-hmm. So. I don't know in terms of like what what would what would I class him as? I would maybe just class him as a how do you what do you call that? No, no, a ten, just a like a floater. Just let let, let, him, let him high pressures. Let like him, in a half position. Aye, um, I'm always I'm always because I know a, a floater's kind of a disrespectful thing when it comes to training. I just, just let him go to floater. He's pushed. Well, it's no in terms Aye. of that. I just mean he's just a guy. He's just in. He's just. I think I'm just letting go. Go in high press. And just you do your job again. You'd actually, use a floater for something else as well, mate. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but you, probably the outside of the seen a few aye, floaters in the last aye. couple of weeks, mate. To be honest, aye. I think I think it was actually a float. <laughs> actually, there was some floaters at the end of the game, and the met he caught the we met he caught the fans, and the <laughs> aye. Aye, and they realised, aye, we met the clap the fans and realised they don't turn into chairs. Aye, aye, don't turn into blue chairs, man. I see he's got a blue jacket on him, in fact, aye. he's got a blue jacket on him, so is he, so is he. Aye. Uh, was, but in terms of, like you said, Aaron Moy, mate, I, I did I did mean to mention him at, at the start of the pod as well, he, I thought he was really good. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to say that he's shutting anybody up, but some people should be realising you, you don't play with yourself every week when, you, when you're fit, especially even when you're busy fit and busy playing. He was playing with Australia, so that tells yeah. you how much he's he's thought of in terms of them as well. Um, I in terms of the midfield, mate, we've got a lot of options. Even though McGregor's again because you beat Hibs, you as I don't think McGregor's still a miss, but you don't because you've won the game six one. Nobody's talking about McGregor injured anymore. No, because you've won that again. Maybe against Hearts, maybe different because you'll miss that battle at Tyne Castle, but. You're, there's no qualms about McGregor. It's only really when you're losing games, ah, we miss him. But when you win games, I know it sounds stupid, but you, but you don't really miss it as much. Aye. But it's when you, the Leipzig game, for me, you noticed it a lot that you did miss him. Um, but like you say, it's not really as long as we think. It's technically only a few weeks because of the World Cup, etc. So mm-hmm. it's not that he's missing, he's going to miss like 15 games or so, but we hope no. By all accounts, the early diagnosis, it's only a few weeks um, yeah. in terms of after the World Cup, which is four or five weeks away, so, um, which, which is crazy, November, I'm all cup, it's absolutely mad, but, um, overall, mate, what's your thoughts, been over, for obviously the last week, we've obviously not a lot of content, obviously, due to some, due to some other things, but, um, it's been good to chat to you, make you through a lot of things, but how, what's your take on the last week or so, mate, and obviously, looking forward to getting more about, um, on Wednesday. Um, Ryan, you know my thoughts, mate. I thought we played quite well on Tuesday. I thought we done really well against Leipzig and Spells. Um, again, it's all about taking your chances. We look at a lucky overfed man. Mm. I mean, my, I really hit the post. It bounces out. I hit Greg Taylor does the right thing. He hits it into the ground, trying to take it away from the goal, and the fucking ball. I said, "Well, what chance have we got?" And we talk about luck. I know. And then Maeda's header goes by the post. So, and then Maeda obviously gets, he's that wee chance right at the start as well. And there was a couple of chances Kyogo with that heater. I know with the, the one Haskabanovich floats into him. Um, but then there's, I, I've watched that back on the telly and I do think Val would have flagged that. And mm-hmm. Had that away in, in the goal. I do think Val would have flagged that and chopped it off, to be honest. 
because he's about maybe that mm. offside. That's bad that the rules now, but on it, he's an error offside if it makes sense. Well, that's it. I mean, the, 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 these are these protocols now that we're going to be. You're, got, you're probably going to find it's going to flag up a lot now, mm-hmm. come a weekend onwards, especially in Scotland. Um, because there's got to be a lot of stoppages in games. You know, the game's not going to flow, and maybe the way we, the, you know, the game, we're used to the game flowing. The first three while I know, I would say to every fan that's maybe even listening here, or, you know, moving forward, Expect a lot of teething problems. There's going to be teething issues mm-hmm. with us. There's going to be demand every week for it to be scrapped. This, that, and it. You know, rip it up, toss it in the bin. They've spent a lot of money on it, mate. That ain't happening. They've built a big centre at Clydesdale House or something it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it looks state-of-the-art. I mean, don't get me wrong, it does look state-of-the-art. But it's the same morons who used to be referees, in my opinion, that are still operating that technology. Ah, it's got to all be... You're, all, you're, all you've done is made them even more dangerous. It's got to be, again, mate, we could probably talk about it on a, a podcast during the week about it again, obviously not to, but I do believe that it's got to be maybe referees that are known maybe in, in the league or in that, that are doing it because that takes the, I don't want to say a bit of bias out it because, but I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather referees that won the in the league done it, maybe guys who won the in, one there and and including the league. I think the good thing on Orion is it's hockey, so it's the same Aye. system they use mm-hmm. in Europe. Mm-hmm. It's that's what they've done their training based on. So it's that hockey system that they've got now. Um, but in terms of moving forward, right? You know myself, mate. I, I would just I just want to see us kicking on and try and win as many games as we can, mate. Try and go on another run if we can, mm. uh, and just try and batter into. You know, getting as many good results, good good performances, hopefully along the way. Performances probably under the main the main thing. You just want to see results. Mm-hmm. Results put pressure on now. Results like Saturday certainly put pressure on. As we've seen yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um do I think, you know they'll, they'll come a point again where it where it will come into question. And I I just don't know if a certain team are going to be up for the, you know, they're going to be up to get it out of the line. I don't think so. Gone what I'm seeing now. Um, it's a long time between now and January. There's a lot of football still to be played as well. So, I think, just moving forward, I'd want to see as one as many games as we can. Do as well as we can. And gain the experience needed in order to try and go back into the Champions League next season in order to do better than what mm-hmm. we have done this season. Maybe no, maybe no in terms of performance-wise, because I think we've played quite well. And all you need to do is look back. You've got Ancelotti, Marco Rose, the Shakhtar manager. You've got even players like Fosberg and Kunku, Timo Cruz, Tony Cruz, Luka Modric. All we're talking about is saying, you know, how well we've played as a team, how, you know, the manager we've got, blah, blah, blah. That's no coincidental, right? These guys have just come up against this. They've, they've, yeah. they've seen it. I think they got a fright now. I think some of them, you know, wow, well, man, that mob will get something about them here. Know what I mean, I, I think I think a lot of people look at this league and just, ah, it's a backward kind of fucking league. It's crap. Yeah. It's, you know, and I think boys like Hatati and other boys have done well. You know, that you know they've, they've showed up really well in some of the games. It's just been a shame as a, as a, a unit and as... As a collective, we've just not been able to, you know, kick on in terms of getting a few goals and creating the chances and scoring the chances. Um, but that will come now. That will come. But as I say, well, you need to gain experience. But then, what do we know, mate? Come January, come the summer, the fucking squad could just go because uh, mm. it's just going to... It's just all the players are going to get both off us and then I just need to rebuild the thing again. I hope that doesn't happen. I hope Ange is wise enough to either have an alternative in place, whereas if a player is going to go, he's got somebody in mind who's going to come in and, you know, replace him. Or he doesn't let everybody go in bulk. Mm -hmm. He does it in a period of moderation. 
Um, but like you say, the boys like Captain Vickers and Jota, I, I think the boys are safe for now because they're just signed their deals and they're just here. It's boys, man, like I'm talking about maybe Juranovic's and Aye. you know, they, they, you know, they, some of these boys, maybe Matt O'Reilly, because there's a lot of there's mm-hmm. a lot of chat now about you know teams like Man U and Arsenal and Newcastle. They're all up watching him. I mean, we were just rumoured there with a guy called Hitchin, uh scout guy. Mm-hmm. What would they be know, mate? He could be working for an art club down south. Might have been no. up watching. Might, he might have been up watching Matt Riley. We don't mm-hmm. know. Or somebody else that was on the team. Um, I'm just glad you're on a bit. I suppose they up to scratching uh, Tuesday night because I don't even think he got a game of rounders with a fucking school um, on that performance. But um, no, as I say, mate, moving forward, I just want to, I want to like, just to keep us all happy and obviously keep us smiling. Um, I'll take everybody, you know, make us smile, mate. I don't imagine, you know what I mean? Me, we've got one another for that, so. Um, but no, as I say, what about yourself? I just same as you, mate. Um, I don't want. Well, it wasn't a wee blip we had it. We just obviously two or three games that we all know in football. It happens at any level you can go through. Please, a two or three weeks and no really playing well. It happens. Injuries, suspensions, and just guys no really turn up. That, that can happen. It's football. Um, we can't expect this to be at a pump every game. Ah, it's frustrating when it doesn't happen, but it's football and as, as a fan, maybe it's not something you need to just sit back and kind of refocus and just go right on the next week. It won't happen again. We need to keep going. So I agree with you, mate. Just I going forward. Um, obviously, the European side will take care of itself. Um, you're still, I think, like you say, we'll, we'll speak about it as we go along on, on, on the next week, but I think beating Shaq does a must um, I think it's a must in terms of no, I want to say getting played back and just putting a wee bit of a stamp on the group in terms of getting a result at home because if you're not getting if you're not getting a, a victory at all at home uh, it's no it's no embarrassing it's no it's no ridiculous it's just no really good enough um, you, you expect to get at least three or six points we will but, but we were expecting to get, no expecting, but you were really hoping to get six points at home against Leipzig and Schachter. It's not happened. Still got a chance of getting three. Still get, you've still got a tiny, tiny sniff against something. Remember about if it's yeah. going to happen? No. I've, I've, I've seen worse things in football happening. I a lot. Football these days, anything can happen. If if Sharif Tiraspol can go to the and win, we can do it. If Club Baruch can do it the other day, we can do it. But can I really see he's going to be burning down? Stick a wee bit of time for Club Bridge to be where they're all right. Club Bridge have as well. had to build over a period of a couple of seasons, they, didn't they, they brought in 60 million and I spent 40. We can't do that. Do you know what I mean? Aye. We can't spend 40 million pounds in players. And the chances of bringing in 60 million pounds, you need to sell three or four of your big assets. No, surely that's just a fair year on a bitch's books. Come on. Well, well, it's probably, let's be fair, it's probably Carl McGregor. That's what you're. That's what you're talking. In my right. opinion, if guys like Declan Rice and that are going, suppose they're hundred million pounds. So what's so what's McGregor then? Captain, Captain of Celtic. Greg Taylor's now foot for. Aye, aye. <laughs> um, <laughs> I move forward, mate. I'm the same as you. Um, just keep taking over, getting results, and just I start getting the high performances back again because I think that will be a good confidence boost for the team for the weekend. Getting to obviously the the cup game, so you've got a next two this next week. You've got three games in basically a week now so mm-hmm. um, it's going to be a tough week probably on the players' his legs I know maybe a, t- two games I would say is ah, you should be able to play at your pump but three games in a week sometimes ah, we all know that's high level we especially playing Shakhtar this is where he will I think use your squad a wee bit this week mm-hmm. um, obviously you don't want to change too much um, but I, may, I um, agree with me in terms of moving forward keep us all happy and get results if anybody please likes the content please subscribe to the YouTube channel and um, you'll get a wee a wee notification when you click your bell and um, when we go live and then a YouTube video pop up. Me and JP is obviously on Twitter as well. Um, the page is obviously on Twitter as well. Type in the, name of the podcast. It'll, type, uh, it'll turn up on Twitter. Uh, we're on TikTok as well and me and JP are on Instagram as well. Just type our names in and you'll get us on that as well. But anything else for yourself, JP, before we end this Monday session with the two Ronnies? No, mate. That's all I can think of. Believe it or not, my mind's went a blank. Um, first time for everything, I suppose, mate. Um, but hell, hell, mate. Hell, hell, mate, and take care. Cheers.